sometimes buy into that and say, it's not going to change. I am going to make permanent decisions on the basis of how I feel right now. And yet, feelings are ephemeral. <coughs> feelings are not what we're called to base our faith upon. In this gospel lesson where Jesus is accosted by his disciples saying, hey, Jesus, give us faith. And then I read the whole section and I think, why does Jesus segue to this odd little story about the servant and the employer? But then when I began to get used to it and work through it the last couple of weeks as I prepared for this morning, I realized Jesus is talking to us and saying, you know, don't make such a big hoo-ha. Oh, I am a Hebrew. I've been such a Christian all oh, my life. I am righteous. I am perfect. I have it all together. Sorry about the rest of you. I'm okay if you're not. Ah, instead, to be humble and to do our work. Regardless of how large or small our faith is. This last week, I spent probably a couple of hours too long in my yard. And so I attacked the hill that's behind my house with some vigor and alacrity. There's a small culvert there through which runs Clyde Creek, a poetic and romantic name. It is currently dry, and so I was able to make my way to the hill facing my house. And there with my trusty gardening shears, I hacked down one after another of a weed called Tree of Paradise or Tree of Heaven. It's a wonderful, beautiful weed. It has leaves that are like this big, and it grows to about this tall. And it has beautiful berries that the catbirds love that grow out of a long stem and a deep purple and leave interesting stains on my car when the birds get through with them. It looks real good on bright yellow, I'll tell you why. Now, the tree of heaven is an invasive species. And a good reason for cutting it down is that it kills the hard woods that are native to Indiana. So as I whacked and hacked at these gigantic monstrous shrubs, I uncovered little maple trees and a couple of oak trees. And I uncovered the dozen or so arbor vita that I had planted and that would have probably died had I not every couple of months gone out and cleared away the things that shaded them. And I got to thinking about our feelings. Our feelings can overshadow our faith and kill it till it's dead than dead. But you know what? The feelings aren't the permanent things. Good and bad, exalted or depressed. Our feelings ebb and flow, much like the tree of paradise. They're not sturdy, they're not steady, they do not last. But the hard ones of faith that are not as attractive, quite frankly, and don't have blue red stalks and wonderful berries for the catbirds to eat, that's what keeps us going. Blaise Pascal, who was probably <coughs> the penultimate speaker for the age of reason, talked about something in terms that today we call Pascal's dilemma. It is, if God exists and I decide, here's pure reason, no feelings at all, and I decide not to follow God, then I stand a chance of being thrown into hell for eternity. But if God does not exist, and yet I give my life to service of God, I've still lived a life that benefits others and is filled with integrity. And it's not wasted, even if there is no heaven or hell. Now there is a purely reasoned approach to God, saying risk everything, risk nothing, and gain. And Jesus is saying, doesn't matter how much faith you have. You might have a tiny seed of faith. But you still go out to the fields every day. You still serve others. You still behave as a person of faith, upon your grounded upon the solid rock of Jesus the Christ. Not just, this is how I feel today, or don't you love that song, it just makes me cry every time we sing it, or I don't care about the phrase where they didn't move. <coughs> Feelings, but faith is believing and doing. John Wesley wrote to a young pastor who 
had asked him for advice, saying, I'm a preacher of God, and I'm not sure I always believe in God. John Wesley wrote back to him and said, preach faith. And then because you preach faith, you will gain faith. And because you have gained faith, you will be able to preach your own faith. You and I are people who have feelings as well as reason. You and I are people who have doubts as well as belief. But faith is something different, something substantial we can grab onto that does not change day to day. We may feel like we be as the widow does, covering her pillow with tears. And yet, God is there and loving. We may feel like exalting and praising God and being so enthused because we've been so blessed. God is there and loving. Whatever phases we find ourselves in, the lens of despair, the exaltation, of Advent and Easter, the deep learning times of kingdom time, whatever cycle our soul is in, God is there, and God knows how we feel. God has walked this path for centuries with people before us, and God came down in human form to say, I feel too. I know what it is to weep beside the grave of someone you love. I know what it is to dance at a wedding. I know what it is to have close friends surround you with love. I know what it is to have dear friends betray you. God is there and God is with us. Thank God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. We give you thanks and love you, Lord for giving us lamentations that we may identify with. We give you thanks for exaltations of song, of story, of your holy word. We give you thanks for the granite assurance that you are with us and love us, that you have walked these same roads and you walk them with us. Thank you, God, that faith is not closely aligned to emotion that we can make our decisions and make our walk in faith close to you, knowing that you are with us through it all. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer, our King. Amen.